Welcome back to Building the Future. Today we have Greg and Catherine from Fittery. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm excited to have you guys. Yeah, I think absolutely. what you guys are doing is, is actually really interesting to me, but maybe before we kind of get into that, let's cover each of your backgrounds. So Greg, maybe you want to go first? Sure. So uh, I started out as a technologist. I okay. went to school at Vanderbilt University doing computer engineering. Okay. Uh, ended up moving almost very quickly into product management. So I love okay. building stuff and I love using technology to make things happen. Sure. But I really love the creative aspects of the business side. So being able to put together products that customers really love and sure. talk to consumers and understand what they really like about the, the products you're building. So did uh, product management at HomeDepot.com oh, okay. and then moved Very to cool. AutoTrader.com. Uh, it's actually where Catherine and I met. We were working oh, okay. at AutoTrader.com. Um, and did again product management there. Um, spending a lot of time in the idea of basically searching and buying products. Marketplaces and e-commerce is where I spent most of my career. Sure. So what kind of got you passionate about technology growing up? You know, I, uh, I was always a person who just liked to put stuff together. Okay. Um, you know, when I, was, when I was a kid, I was the kid with all the Legos scattered sure, on the sure. floor. You know, I just Me loved, too, yeah. I yeah, love I loved that. creating things and making stuff. And so I did that, you know, I've done that my whole life, whether it was technology, you know, I had the, uh, you know, the, the 386 up and was, yep. you know, playing on the computer totally. or, you know, making music or doing anything that's basically building and making. That was always kind of my, my passion. Sure, that's awesome. How about you, Catherine? Uh, my background? Yeah, so, sure. Um, I went to Emory. Okay. What did um, you take? Sorry? What did you take? Oh, I mean, was my major? Yeah. Uh, English. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, went to Emory, and then after that, I kind of um, got out of school right as the internet boom was booming. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, I went and worked for a web consultancy in town, and did a lot of consulting with the major brands in town. So, okay. Home Depot, did some work with the International Olympic Committee, which was fun. I got to go to Torino. Sure, um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with UPS, sure. with Turner, Coke. So I got to work with a lot of companies around town. And then after that, went to Auto Trader and did product management at Auto Trader. Okay. Well. Okay. So I'm kind of curious then, what kind of got you guys, you know, deciding that you want to start a company? <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting when you're kind of in the big corporate world, it's sure. very different than the startup world. And I think, very much so. I think we've both always been passionate about solving consumer problems and solving really big issues, specifically because we have a background in shopping, in the idea of, sure. of shopping and e-commerce. Um, you know, so when we were at, uh, you know, we met at Auto Trader, and one of the things that you're always doing is kicking around ideas for the next big thing. How do you solve this big problem? Sure. And one of the problems that we found was actually in fit. I don't know if you mm -hmm. want to kind of tell our, tell our story. Oh, so bit. yeah, so we were kind of talking, and we were both sort of saying that we had um, different body parts that were hard to fit, which, as we found, is a thing that everybody believes. And, sure. You know, you talk. I was just talking to somebody who was saying, you know, that it's their issues that they're really short, or you know, I say I have little shoulders, and Greg says he's got short arms, and so you know, we've all got sort of sure. different issues with our bodies, and. Um, we were kind of thinking about that just from a consumer perspective, and then we started to do some research and realized that from a retailer perspective, it's a huge, incredibly expensive problem sure. where they're spending billions and billions of dollars every year, $17.9 billion a wow, year. Wow, that's yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just managing this returns problem, so it's a lot of lost uh, revenue out the door. Sure. So, um, so we realized that it was a huge problem for consumers and then a huge problem for retailers. So we did some qualitative and quantitative research and um, you know, realized that it was a big problem and kind of decided to leave and go pursue it. Okay, yeah. so what was kind of the deciding factor that we're like, okay, we got to go do this? I think uh, you know, when any kind of, anytime you have an idea, you want to make sure is now the time, is now the time. You kind sure. of validate and make sure that you're mm -hmm. ready to make that leap. And for us, we did that for, you know, I think it was six months. We were understanding the market, you know, feeling out, could we build the technology to actually so make what we This was before happen. you left your jobs. Correct? Right, right. Okay. So, okay. you know, we were, we were understanding, you know, can we build the technology to do what we really want to do to solve sure. this problem yeah. the right way? So we did alpha testing that would allow us to really understand how, uh, how that would work in an offline way. We built some prototype technology really to vet, can we match people to clothes that fit perfectly? Okay. Um, and then we kind of looked at each other and said, you know, is this the right time? Do, have we seen this is a big enough problem? Our technology's ready. Um, right. We were, I think, both very passionate about building stuff and moving quickly and really um, finding ways to do stuff that we've never done before and all that sure. seemed to line up perfectly with what we were doing with Fittery. Okay, interesting. So did you guys, are you self-funded? Did you raise a bunch of money or a little bit of both? Uh, well, we, we started out self-funded. You got to okay. put in a little bit of money to kind of get going. And we raised a small friends and family round to, okay. uh, to kind of get us to the point we're at now, okay. which is uh, we're live, we've got customers, we have... 
we're driving really, really great sales. We've got a lot of brand customers on board, uh, and then we'll be in the process of raising more money. Sure. So at what point did you decide, okay, well, we should probably, um, basically, what was the final straw that decided, okay, like we've validated the idea, let's go for this. Like at what point did you guys <laughs> decide to like quit your jobs, let's go for this? <laughs> I think, um, I mean, I think this is sort of, as Greg was kind of describing, it was a series of hypotheses sure. that we were vetting. So we were kind of saying, you know, um, can we build an algorithm that will calculate this stuff Okay, so you accurately? had everything kind of planned out almost. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think actually, I think, you know, one of the, for example, one of the big hypotheses that we were validating was, would companies actually give us the measurements of their clothing? Oh, okay. You know, I mean, it's totally possible that they would think that we, sure. you know, that, that was proprietary and they wouldn't be able to share that, but... We found that they would share that information and that we were able to calculate things accurately. And we did a series of in-person fittings. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Okay, oh, so you got did, quite involved. We, mm -hmm. Yes, quite involved. <laughs> That's good, though. <laughs> yeah, Like, yeah. it's yeah. good because you really validated your idea before you just went for it, right? right? And yeah. I think a lot of companies don't, don't do that, right? Yeah. And they just they say, well, we have this idea. We want to do it. We'll figure out how to actually do it later. And I, I like the fact that you guys didn't quit right away. Right. You, you validated your idea, but I, like you laugh, but I think a lot of people do, right? And some people yeah. end up living in their car and then maybe selling that car at some point. Right, we did not mm -hmm. live in our car. Well, that's good yeah. though. No, I mean, I, Fingers I think- Fingers crossed that right. I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. I, I, think, I think that was really a big thing for us is we need to make sure that we're validating because you know, like quit your jobs. And sure. actually Greg got us t-shirts that's a quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> when it was time, it was like, we right. need to quit your job. Right. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kevin Horick. I host a show called Building the Future, where I interview founders, CEOs, investors, and others, you know, just kind of following their dreams, chasing their passions, and having a good time with it. And to be quite frank, it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. It's really awesome to be able to network and meet a bunch of people throughout the world. Um, you know, whether it's Skype calls, in-person interviews, or, uh, you know, just kind of on FM radio or at conferences and other networking events. It's, it's been a blast for me and kind of got me out of my comfort zone a little bit, which I, I try to encourage people to do as well. Um, you know, if somebody like myself can do it, I think anybody can do it. And I think it's been quite interesting. I've learned a lot about myself and other people. Um, it's also really grown my own personal network. And I encourage everybody to network and, you know, the world's so small nowadays. You don't even, it doesn't really matter where you live on the planet. You can, you know, do stuff in other countries or your own country or city. It doesn't really matter anymore. Things have gotten so small and the world's such a small place. And, you know, just being able to talk to these people that are doing stuff all over the world. You know, there's a lot of people doing stuff that are, that it's awesome inside and outside of you know Silicon Valley and kind of the Northern California area and there's a lot of hot spots kind of coming up across the nation and you know I look forward to connecting with all of you. Welcome back we have uh, Greg and Catherine from Fittery. So we didn't really quite cover this yet maybe people will have a hint of what you guys do but what is exactly you guys do? Sure. So, uh, so Fittery is basically a marketplace for shoppers to come and find perfectly fitting clothes okay, across cool. a huge selection of brands. So we sure. have, uh, we mentioned the technology we built earlier. Yeah. Our technology actually matches you in real time to all of these items we have across our entire catalog. So brands like J. Crew and Brooks Brothers and Macy's and folks like so, that. So wait, when you say that, so do you mean that when I'm shopping online, I can say, okay, well, these are my measurements mm -hmm. these brands won't work for my body type exactly and we actually get down to the item level so right. it's not just each brand because if you think about j crew j crew has a ludlow and a ludlow sure. slim and various cuts i got you so we try to tell you actually this is the specific item that works best for you uh, once you've given us a little information about your size and shape okay so how do i go about giving you that information i guess yeah, so we have, uh, we have basically two paths you can do that. Okay. So the one that we uh, developed most recently is called our quick size tool. And it takes okay. less than one minute. You give us basically the answers to eight to ten questions you already know about the clothes you wear. So okay. what size pants do you wear? You know, how tall are you? Things like that. And we're able to use big data behind the scenes based on thousands of users' measurements 
to triangulate your size and shape very, very accurately. So we've, we've compared ourselves to other solutions in the market and we're 35% more accurate than one of the leading, wow, the leading options awesome. out there. So the other option we have is hand measurements if you want a very specific, okay. uh, specific route, but obviously we know that's not easy to do if you're watching, you know, watching a game on the couch and shopping, you're not gonna be able to get up and get a measuring tape out. So we sure. have the quick size pass so you can get easily into shopping right away. Okay, very cool. So what types of companies have you guys been working with then? So we've got um, really most of the brands that you would see in the mall. I mean, we've got J. Crew, Banana okay. Republic, Gap, um, Macy's, very cool. Dales. Yeah. So a lot of the big department stores and then a lot of the major brands, Ralph Lauren. Um, I think, you know, one of the things is we are a consumer facing marketplace, but then a, a big part of it is also that we are a B2B company. Sure. So we harvest data from a lot of different sources, including the marketplace. I got to you. Create data products that we turn around and then sell back to the retailers to give them insight into, for example, we could tell um, we could tell a retailer that if they narrow a shirt by an inch at the waist, that they can sell thirteen percent more. Really, that's yeah. very cool, yeah, right? Yeah. And super useful to them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, how did you guys go about landing these big name brands? Cold calling, networking, bit of both. <laughs> So um, it, a lot, a lot of ways. Okay. I think we started, and it, you know, we started small and kind of called um, the presidents of some smaller companies and okay. got them excited about it. It was a free trial in the beginning. Sure. Um, uh, you know, got them excited about it, got them on board, and then sort of slowly worked our way up. And you know, you talk to one brand, and they'd say, you know, I'll, I'm interested in this other brand. Is it? So you talk to the other brand, and right. So it was kind of. Organic working our way out. So did you have to like play the two brands? Oh yeah, they're definitely interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Lots of startups start up that way, right? Yeah, sure. And the good news is, I mean, the thing that made this an easy conversation in some ways is that the retailers know how big a problem fit really is. They know it's a you. huge problem for shoppers. It's a huge problem for them. I mean, Catherine mentioned the bottom line impact. Mm -hmm. You know, it's $18 billion sure. to the industry. So when you are on the phone with a Ralph Lauren, when you're on the phone with someone like that, they really understand immediately the problem you're solving and they're eager to you know, basically come on board for innovative solutions for it. Sure, so did you target a specific person in those companies or, or how did you figure out who to get in touch with at those companies? It depended on the size of the company and, okay. and also what our contacts were. So at a smaller company, I went straight to the top. Sure. Um, you know, medium sized companies, you know, if, you know, I had a friend who who knew somebody pretty high okay. at the J. Crew, so it was a lot of like networking it really depended okay that's interesting because I think a lot of people always wonder like oh you guys have all these big brands like how did you get them and yeah. it sounds like networking is yes. one of the main it's a lot of hard reasons. work yeah sure. <laughs> yeah no. it's basically the opposite skill set when you're developing technology you're kind of in a bunker you sure. know trying to figure out can we actually build this thing and it's the opposite skill that you need to actually go out shake hands and get people right. excited about your idea so that's what's fun about being an entrepreneur you got to exercise all parts of your brain right no totally so I I'm kind of curious you, you guys are obviously working with a huge number of brands now, mm -hmm. kind of, and we'll get into the big data side kind of uh, a bit later, but I'm curious <laughs> to know where do you guys kind of see this going? Because for me anyway, it seems like this could almost go any way and it could almost even move into different industries. So I think um, <laughs> we are not at this point thinking about different industries. Okay. You know, the, the immediate thing is to, is to move into all the different clothing categories and then to get to women pretty quickly. Okay. And the other thing is, you know, like I said, it's, you know, we're B2C and B2B. I think we really are exploring, you know, if sort of the, if the nugget of our value is really our ability to really effectively match people to the clothing that fits them best, right. what are all of the different applications of that? So we are in a program um, that's sponsored by the city of New York and oh, wow. and Bloomingdale's and Macy's and Microsoft um, and so mm -hmm. it's really it's so far been amazing and giving us a lot of access to Bloomingdale's is one of our sponsors and so we're okay. going to have mm -hmm. access to work directly with them and really kind of explore all the different ways that we can apply this. I, I think that's awesome and it's, it's interesting that you found like I'm kind of surprised that these big brands didn't do this themselves right in, mm -hmm. a, in a lot of ways right because yeah. you're solving like a real problem that Obviously, when you call them, they know about right away. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting if you think about kind of the intersection of fashion and technology. Sure. Those two worlds don't collide that often. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. So if you think about the type of people solving tech problems, the type of people solving fashion problems, it's just not the same world. And so that's why we really like what we're doing is because we have the ability to do both. 
And we have the ability to kind of bring those worlds together, coming from you know a perspective of we've done technology, we understand what consumers need, we understand how to build valuable data products. Sure. And that's something that just typically doesn't happen in those worlds. So it's it's a nice place for us to be in a really good good chance for us to disrupt some uh, some industries. Cool, very cool. But well, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kevin Horick. Let's quickly talk some tips um, for networking. Um, I think a lot of people just don't realize that um, a lot of people are willing and and happy to help you and, you know, are fine if you reach out to them with a purpose and a meaning, um, whether you reach out kind of uh, on social media like Facebook or LinkedIn or, or Twitter. I've had a lot of success um, just reaching out to people on LinkedIn, Twitter, um, that's pretty much how I've gotten most of the show, m most of the guests for the radio and TV show is between kind of just reaching out to people on, on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, you know, I kind of uh, started out just adding random people on uh, LinkedIn and, you know, just kind of going through and Googling or not, sorry, Googling, um, actually just searching for, for people that say like Google and, and whatnot and just adding those people and you know a lot of those people add you back and then you kind of your network keeps growing and I, I know it's a little bit controversial to to kind of just reach out to random strangers and whatnot but it, it really has worked out for me and um, that's kind of how I ended up getting the radio show which led to the TV show it's also how I got asked to write a book and uh, also write for a, a tech blog um, out of Los Angeles. So, you know, just reaching out to people has been really, really great for me. And, and I recommend um, you try doing that. The, the other thing that I think makes a lot of sense is actually apply for jobs that you want. Um, you know, don't be afraid uh, and keep applying at certain places. You know, it could take years and years before you actually maybe hear back. But keep at it, you know, and hopefully it doesn't take that long, but don't give up, right? And also read their job postings and see what kind of skills they're looking for and either learn the, those skills if you don't already know them or, you know, start adding those to the, your resume. Um, the, the other thing is, um, you know, ask for, ask for p feedback on anything that you're kind of working on or, you know, ask people what you can improve on you know, like I reached out to one of my design heroes at Google a number of years ago, and um, he's really well known. I, I won't mention his name here, but I was completely shocked when a couple weeks later he wrote back and he would have spent at least 30 to 40 minutes on the email he sent me. And I was I was quite, quite impressed. And, and so, you know, it, it's worth asking. You're not always going to hear back, but you need to keep kind of trying and trying and, and, and eventually somebody somebody will write back to you. The other thing is why not start a little side project or little company or business? You know, you never know what these side projects can do and who you'll end up meeting through that. The other thing that makes a lot of sense is either start or go to kind of local local groups. They don't necessarily have to be networking um, type events. But, you know, there's always little like podcast meetups or some sort of group that's, yeah, there's obviously going to be networking, but aren't just just for networking where you go here like a speaker talk and, and, and whatnot. Um, the other the other thing that I found that that really has worked great for me is make friends with good networkers because they'll end up inviting you out to events and chances are they've probably been to other events in the past that they can inter introduce you to others at that event and you know if you keep going and you kind of maybe shadow them a little bit for one or two events you end up knowing a bunch of people at those events you keep going and you know you meet a bunch more people and it kind of just spirals from there so hopefully those are some useful tips on what have worked for me um networking so um yeah well i hope you're enjoying the show and uh, we'll be back at it shortly. Welcome back. To, we're talking with Greg and Catherine from Fittery. Guys, I, I know we've been kind of just mentioning where technology kind of meets fashion and they haven't really necessarily played well together or at all together really. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and you guys are using big data and that's what really kind of fascinated me about what you guys are doing because I get big data is kind of a buzzword because data is just data. <laughs> but I think when you give it to, to the average person now, they kind of know what big data is. And the fascinating thing about it is you can get so many different things from big data. Mm -hmm. So maybe just for the audience out there, do you want to maybe explain exactly how you use data and what you kind of do with the data? Sure. So uh, I think Catherine mentioned we're, mm -hmm. a, we're a consumer marketplace where people can come and sure. shop. And so when shoppers come to Fittery.com, they fill out a profile, tell us a little information about their size and shape. Sure. And what that allows us to do is understand exactly the products that are great for them and the products that are not so good for them. Sure. And that's like big data. Right. So yeah. we have thousands of users who have come to our site and given us all this information. Sure. So on the other side, we have the retailers who are giving us all their product level data. So okay. we're able to compare the two of those things and also layer on top of that consumer shopping behavior. So okay. they're, they're going to, you know, they're, what, are, what, what are shoppers cross shopping against one another? If they're looking at okay. J. Crew, what other brands are they looking at with J. Crew? And so all of those kind of three points of entry from a data perspective allow okay. us to create really powerful tools for retailers to get insights into their business. Sure. So from a, from a data perspective, uh, the fashion industry doesn't have a lot of insight into how clothing actually fits their customer base. Okay. So if you think about if you've ordered something online and you send oh, yes. it back and it doesn't fit, you check a box that says doesn't fit. It doesn't really tell you why. There's no sure. information saying, well, it didn't fit because the arms were too long. Right, and that's after the fact. Uh, but okay. even as they're doing garment construction, there's not a lot of input into understanding what the sort of masses look like. It really is all fit on fit models. Okay. So a very sort of generic body, and then you sure. just sort of do math and scale up and scale down. But you know, there's a lot of stuff about a body that changes as you gain and lose weight and are taller sure. and shorter yeah. and all of that stuff. And and it's very it's very difficult to actually. Um, figure out what that is and figure out how each body type relative to your specific demographic sure. whether you're fitting them accurately or not. Well and it like maybe this is stupid but it also probably like race too would really matter right like some people are just traditionally shorter or taller or, sure, sure. or whatever right you know age ethnicity even um, you know geography in some sure. cases so the, the world, you know sure. european countries would have different body types than than america mm -hmm. so sure. there are lots of different variations as you know we're looking at international fittery you know what could that be right. we have to we have to take into account geography and all the other aspects as well mm -hmm. no that makes a lot of sense cuz i know i've ordered clothes from like asia before and it's like if you're you order this size if you order like a male medium right. in america mm -hmm. and then i get it and sure. it's it's like for a 12 year old boy or something like that. So, yeah. right. And you return it or whatever, but I, <laughs> right. I totally, there's a huge need here. Right. And I think Absolutely. as more and more people move online shopping, if they're not already, it's just a matter of time before they do. Yeah. I mean, online e-commerce for shopping for clothes is $65 billion wow. in 2015. That's growing about 20% a year. So if you think about 2016, it's going to be 70 plus million. It's a significant market. Sure. So can you capture data based on, okay, well, you know, people are looking at your, I don't know, shirt, for example, mm -hmm. but they're not buying because we have the data to say that, well, everybody's looking that that shirt's not going to fit them. Exactly. So we can, we have the positive indicators, like people are buying this because if it's the moment, we also have the negative indicators sure. like you were saying. So okay. this one's not going to fit. It doesn't fit in the arms, doesn't fit in the chest, what, what have you. And that allows us to really cater, again, getting to that big data story. Sure. We can start clustering behaviors and providing those insights back to, okay, if you were a shopper like this, then you know you may not fit as well into this garment and really providing those insights back to the retailers. Sure. So is there anything that you guys never even thought of that you learned just kind of from the data? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We have all kinds of insights that we gather. I think um, one of the things that I've, I found personally very interesting is you know this intuitively when you're shopping for clothes, but you a lot of retailers, their goal is to fit as many people into garments as possible. Right? Sure. So they want to make as few garments as they can. Um, and so often they will make things larger for all oh, sizes okay. to accommodate more mm -hmm. folks. And so, you know, I, um, and that's also varies widely by uh, retailers. So okay. for, a, for a man's dress shirt in a medium, it can vary by up to six inches in the chest oh, if you wow. go from retailer to retailer. So there are huge swings and, you know, I understand why they try to get as many people into a garment sure. as possible, but it doesn't ultimately lead to a great consumer experience of looking your best fitting really, really well. Sure. And fit is one of the, it is probably the most important driver to, you know, having a pulled together stylish look. So as we're, as we're thinking about that, it's, it's amazing the, the opportunity that's there to coach shoppers, A, 
and B, to educate retailers on ways that they can fit their garments on people better. Sure. I think another big thing is that, um, you know, I, I always thought, I knew that, obviously being a female, I knew that the female sizes were inconsistent. I didn't sure. realize that male sizes, even though they have sort of inch, you know, are, mm. are named by the inches, sure. are actually incorrect also. Really? So, yeah, oh yeah. So huh. a 15 inch collar is not actually 15 inches. Okay. So, yeah. Well, how off is it out of it, curiosity? I mean, it then. absolutely depends on the brand. But really? it'd be interesting, yeah, when we were doing, I, th I learned a ton from doing the fittings, you know, like okay. measuring guys and just sort of getting a sense of how they shop and how they view their bodies and how they want their clothes to feel and look and stuff sure. like that. Sure figured that into sort of the way that we calculate fit as mm -hmm. well as it's not just sort of what is the perfect answer it's how do guys actually like things to fit like you know guys like to have a collar that's a little bit looser because it's just more comfortable yeah. and sure and, you know, we knew that for example you know in measuring these guys these guys would say you know oh i wear a 34 and i put the measuring tape around their waist and be 39 mm, sure I'm sorry to tell you but it's because <laughs> that's what the you know that's what the thing says uh, on i see pants. the tag says yeah, yeah that's that's interesting um but sadly guys we're running out of time so maybe if you want to um, mention where people can get more information about you guys online Sure. Just go to fittery.com, fill out a profile, and you can shop across our wide selection of brands like J. Crew, Macy's, Brooks Brothers, and more, and find clothes that fit perfectly. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate you being on the show.